Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Alrighty, it's 23 hours and 56 minutes into the 17th day of November 2021. Uh, and we're beginning our Gnosis log. This is a little complex. I wasn't too sure if I had enough for today. We'll end up seeing what happens, but uh, I'm pretty sure we can sort of stretch things out. Gnosis is something that plays within our life, even though we don't understand. We don't realize it's there. Gnosis has always been designed to be hidden. It's the hidden knowledge, hidden information. And this is where, you know, people are going to think, oh, with my hoodie up, when it's cold out, that, oh, this is something else. This is like Illuminati. This, this, is, uh, this is the Masonic thing. There you go. There's the all-seeing eye and the whole, the whole you know, the uh, um, all the symbols and gestures are there. And, of course, that wouldn't be the case because... Gnosis does not sit on just with the Masonic thing. The Masonic, the Masonic understanding of Gnosis is one aspect of Gnosis. It's not the entire thing. Uh, there's a lot in common with everybody else in terms of how the, Gnost the Gnostic work. But if you talk, if you talk about in terms of Gnosis, uh, you talk about the 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 the, the uh, cartoons, the the comics where you have Thor, you have uh, Loki, the god, the god Loki. This is a lot of stuff that comes out of Disney, and a lot of your kids shows have, uh, 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 where is it, uh, the Owl House, which is basically Mo Moloch. Uh, you have uh, Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Uh, you have Milo Murphy. Uh, there's a number, that before there was something known as the uh, Life and Times of Jupiter, uh, Juniper Lee. This was surrounding Asian, Asian Gnosis, the Asian understanding of, no, of the Gnostic world. Uh, and then you have uh, Hinduism. Most people understand Hinduism from the perspective of, of the vegans. The vegans are Gnostic. Even though they may they feel, oh, it's just about diet. It's not about diet. There is a belief there. There is a religion there. Uh, you're environmentalists. Most of you are environmentalists. They don't realize it. That's a religion. There is a Gnostic understanding within the environment. That's very old. They're not on something new. They're on something old. Matter of fact, it was before, it, 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 the, the environmental movement they're involved in began around 1900 AD. And it became out of this particular uh, magic group, this group that believed in magic. And of course, this group also spawned the Nazis. <laughs> so, the, then different Gnostic groups can can produce different things, and they seemingly are different in 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 sort of their perspective. But the end goal in all these cases is simply to kill human beings. In this case, the early case, the early case, and this is what's happening now. And this is what the, the Nazis believe is that man was a parasite, and you had to get rid of X number of people on the planet in order to save the planet, to evolve to the next level of of the human form, that we are not in our properly evolved form. And this is something that, pick, that picks up with Raelians, who are in Montreal, and the Rajneesh, that there needs to be an evolution of mankind. But of course, in order to have this evolution of mankind, you have to have the ones who are defective eliminated. And this is where a large chunk of what's going on today. This is what it's all about. Uh, the, 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 the banning of everything because it's environmental has nothing to do with the environment itself. It's not really, again, something that's real. It's a the, the whole environmental movement is, is a created work. You can see all the mechanisms of Edward Bernays in there. No, it doesn't necessarily mean people don't believe that. That's just it. There, there are people who will call themselves left, and people call, call themselves right, and they'll be fully convinced. Oh, I'm a Marxist, and you know, line will pop up and say, "Oh, no, they're not a Marxist. They, you know, uh, they, they don't know what Marxism Marxism is." 
It doesn't matter if they know what it is specifically in terms of their specific definition. I was argued that the, 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 uh, that uh, Lionel's friends, his friends, aren't true Marxists either, but rather that they are apologists who make excuses for the bad mistakes that have been made in the past and try to, to separate the whole concept of left and socialism from the realities of what's actually going on. In other words, they see only the rhetoric, they never see the reality. And, well, unfortunately, there is reality to socialism, there is, rea there is reality to uh, the leftists, and the people who have experiences, and this includes Yvette Carnell, they've got up, walked away, and said, these people don't know what they're talking about. They have nice ideas, but that's about it. The, the, their ideas are never really uh, sort of in, in a constructed form. And so what happens is that because you have these sort of these different uh, sort of theoretical ideas coming out of academia, and again, academia is a in in its own sense it, it is itself a work. It's a, a LARP. It's a creation. It's not. They don't see reality. They see a created reality based on their own intellect. The intellect becomes king. The intellect, intellect becomes the center of the universe. In that sense, they are always right, and their world is set up and structured to reinforce the entire thing. This is why you have the wars. This is why you have the different levels of professors. And, you know, this you, have, you have the associate professor. You have tenure. You have uh, the esteemed uh, colleague and... You have these different awards, these different departments. It all is there to sort of create in an, a worked environment that these people are separated from, and, and above the others, the, the average men. And this is, even comes out in politics that, that you have the intellectuals, you know, the educated. The, 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 this is where the Democrats focus on. They focus on the educated. And unfortunately, you've got kind of on the, in the other blocks where they're, they're talking about why, why are. The Democrats leaving them alone and not going into the uh, the the proper Black American communities because most of the Black American community communities are not educated the manner the manner that would be acceptable to the academic environment to the educated environment and this is where a large chunk of the Democrat Party came in from. They used the ADOS the the American the, the, the descendants of slaves. They used the blacks as a cause. The the people and the thing is in a cause the people are important. It's the uh, it's the cause that's important. Again, these are philosophy. These are ideas. This is not reality. And a large chunk of these people behind the scenes are again Gnostic. There is a lot of Gnosticism that is still fundamentally involved. It's just hidden. It doesn't come out. And the thing is, you have people trying to bring the stuff out, but again, more often than not, they simply miss the case. They miss the opportunity to do so because they don't. Have all the pieces, and it does take a while to bring get it, to get all the pieces. And but at the same time, is that once you do have all the pieces, can you put it together properly? And this is this, this is the the next problem that comes up is that you may not be able to put the put the puzzle back together again. Well, not the, together again because you never had it together in the first place. But this is the problem if you've never seen the actual picture. Of the puzzle you're putting together. Typically, when you put do putting together a puzzle, you have a picture and you you have all the pieces. You get it and you compare the pieces and say, "Well, that looks like a tree here. This looks like that." In other words, you have something to compare to. In research, even though you have to go out and find these pieces, you don't really have a picture as to what you're putting together. And this is what, what causes a large chunk of the problem because you don't know what you're putting together. And so there's a lot of experimentation. Well, it can go this way, it can go that way. And I'm like a puzzle where there's only there's only one way to put two pieces together, or more like three pieces together. In reality, beyond the puzzle, the puzzle, the research puzzle can be put together in a variety of different ways, and it looks good even though it may be incorrect. And this is what causes a lot of problems. And this is what this is why we have to go into gnosis. We have to go in and define this, even though it's a very large field. And the thing is, the gnosis that most people see 
they, when they, talk, they talk about Illuminati, they talk about uh, Masonic orders and so on and so forth. This is simply one form of Gnosis, one form of, of the Gnostics. Uh, and even the, the so-called Freemasonry, they're broken up into a lot of different groups, a lot of different chapters. Uh, there's the Lions Clubs, there's the uh, the Temple of Ramses. There, there's a whole bunch of them, depending on the level of, of Mason that you're at. And there could be different lodges, different, you know, they're all forms of different things that have, that, that involve uh, the Masonic Rite. And of course, what you know depends on your level, and the rights that you, the rights that you undergo depends on the level that you're, atta you're, you're attaining to. But again, this stuff is never discussed. You can you can find fragments of of of, of it here and there and all over the place, uh, but you have to put it together because what happens is that you find that sometimes when people die, they leave a diary behind or they leave notes behind. It gets onto the internet and this is how you find your bits and pieces all over the place because there are people who, who are uh, basically uh, sort of uh, hoarders on the internet where you hoard information. Of course, uh, amongst their hoarding are these other people's diaries, their sort of their notes, the this and then that. And uh, they would include uh, people who were involved in the lodge, uh, some of the things they may have done, uh, so on and so forth. Is this So you, you begin to understand who was involved where, how they were interconnected. Uh, other times there would be papers that would, you know, initially be hidden away, locked in some, some archive. And of course, but the archive, if, if, if you have it later, let's say uh, 50 years later, trains are coming by, but you can't hear the horns because of the wind. If you have, let's say, someone 50 years ago creates a bit of an archive and then shoves it away someplace. You have someone come along 50 years later, maybe a grandson or, or, or great-grandson, digitizes everything and not, doesn't know what's there, just digitizes everything and puts it onto the internet. Well, now you have an archive that's not necessarily listed that you can walk into and peruse through. And this is where you can find, start finding very interesting things. But I don't, what I'm talking about, this is in terms of the research and gnosis, and this is where things have gone for myself, is that you're going off in a lot of different directions. It takes an enormous amount of time to go through them. Uh, when you listen to other people's lectures on things, they're close to three hours in length. Yvette Carnell was two hours in length. And so it takes an enormous amount of time to go through these archives. And so it could take you months, days, years to go through an archive and to really start making sense of things. But the thing is, the archives don't last forever. Uh, an archive will be out there for maybe, I think the longest I've ever seen an archive last is about two months. And then the archive is gone and you have to go looking elsewhere. Typically, archives disappear, uh, will appear and disappear within two weeks. So you have basically got two weeks to get your crap together, to get in there, pull out as much information as you can, and then go through everything. And then you're on to another, then you're on to other archives. You try to look for other avenues. Sometimes you find them, and sometimes you don't find them. My sort of, it wasn't one path into Gnosis, it was several paths into Gnosis. First, it was doing the history of calculus. This is where I bumped into Newton and Leibniz. Then as I was doing the history of, uh, as I got into the history of uh, calculus, I also had to do a history of quantum mechanics. And, of course, as you go through quantum, mechan quantum mechanics, it's physics, you begin bump again into uh, uh, Newton and Leibniz. <laughs> Amongst others, you also bump, bump into uh, uh, Linus Pauling and, um, and what's his name, Planck. And once again, you're back in the Gnostic path once again. And you're looking at these things that go bump in the night, this, this, so, 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 this whole thing about the Illuminati. So in other words, there are these paths that as you do a deeper and deeper study, you begin to realize, hey, there's a lot more here than I initially thought. And so it does take you a long time to get in there. But the thing is, as I said, I'm describing this uh, here now because I've been doing this for 30 plus years. 
So my knowledge is about that. My, my knowledge is based on my 30 years of experience. Another research re researcher now just starting out will have to go through a good five, 10 years before they really have a good solid base. Not solid base, that's the base you start from. So five years of collections before you really get started, before you have a good enough base. That's 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 not something that's easy. And once you but once you do have that base again, and I do have that base put together, uh, now you can go ahead and start defining things. You can define that the imperial governments, all the imperial governments, from based in Roman Catholicism, were all Gnostic. You can also find that they're still involved with everything that's going on today. Because you can place the Rothschild banking system as the banking system for the for the papacy, the papacy, the papacy contracted out its banking. And the contract went to the Rothschild banking system. This is how they became the kings of Europe. And so a large chunk of what we call your shadow government or your your hidden government, your dark your 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 uh, Uh, dark forces within government, they're all Gnostic. It's, it's about, all about these these sort of beliefs in these different gods and they adhere to the to, to the wills of the god in order to achieve certain favor and certain political goals and power. They sold their soul to the devil. To, the devil. to understand this, you, there is a book called Faust. You go read the book on Faust and that's F A U S T Faust, and you'll look up that term. You'll find there's a huge amount there. And again, this all leads into, into Gnosticism. Dracula is the same thing. You can go on, actually into Frankenstein, and this is what we're saying about the whole the Gnostics thing, in, in coming into, into into today. You go initially to, you initially go to from Frankenstein, Dracula. Uh, and then you go into uh, uh, The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings. And today's current rave that's along the lines of Hobbit and Lord of the Rings is uh, Harry Potter. Harry Potter is our recent, most recent point in history when we're looking at the Gnostic world, the, the, the world of Dungeons and Dragons, the hidden world of witches and wizard, wizards. And once again, this whole thing is European. It's a very European uh, perspective on these things. And it's more particularly a Western European. It's a white experience. Because once you go Eastern European, you're no longer fully within the white zone. You have a lot of Asiatic influence in there because of the likes of Genghis Khan. But all of Genghis Khan, if you go north to Sweden, you would say, well, that's, that's white territory. Well, not necessarily because you have Laplanders there. And if you look at the blondes, oh, yeah, blondes, they're white people. Well, no, because the mummies, the oldest record, uh, historical record on on blondes, these are the blonde mummies, you find them in the Asian desert of, of uh, Asian world of, or the Asian sphere of the Gobi Desert. The Gobi Desert is in Asia. It's in China. So what happens, you have not only in terms of your 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 uh, your evidence from out of Africa, in terms of your in terms of your skeletal evidence, but you also have an out of Asia uh, type of uh, uh, record in terms of your mummies. And the thing is, the uh, the the North Africans were far from white. They weren't this the white whole the whole white concept uh, in terms of this white sphere and this and that. Again, this is the Gnostic thing. It comes out of the Nazi party. It doesn't. The, you really don't have this sort of white fantasy uh, in term any, anything more than than nineteen uh, forties. You have it to a certain degree in terms of the empire uh, before nineteen forty, but uh, it's not there together as a formalized theory. It's just sort of a mishmash of ideas. And of course, these these are the creation of the museums, particularly the English Museum, where you had a large chunk of the English going out and doing archaeology. The English were really the ones who really sort of, really sort of began archaeology. They're the ones 
sort of brought it to the forefront uh, and sort of created what we call the archaeological standards. So there wasn't it wasn't that just that these people were, you know, were useless. They, every era, every every time period brought its own brought forth its own benefits. There were always detract detractors. There were always bad parts. There was good parts and there were bad parts. And of course, slavery. But, but slavery was all over the place. It wasn't simply isolated to the white people uh, in the 1940s. It was all over. The thing is, we still have slavery today as well. I mean, the Asians trade do as much slave trading with women as do the Europeans. The Muslims are the same way. The Muslims do slave trading, along with the Catholics and the, uh, you know, and and uh, the rest of the Europeans. The blacks have you go into the history of where the American slaves come from. They weren't. It wasn't the European armies going in to areas of Africa and knocking over, and knocking over. Over whole villages and carting them off to to uh, to to North America. And actually, they didn't land in North America. They land they landed in Jamaica first. Jamaica is your first stop, and then from Jamaica they came into the United States. So that's why you have the Caribbean islands the way they are, Aruba, uh, Saint Martin. These are all. This is where the pirates were. These were all pirates. Uh, it was the the black tribe tribes who became very powerful again they used they had they had the war gods rather than killing off their 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 uh prize as people and this is often when you raided another village you raided another kingdom you conquered the kingdom the conquered became your slaves and you could do whatever you wanted to them this is how these africans got that they were conquered people by other africans and then sold off to the white slave traders in other words, they were they were they be, they became property. And once again, because these people all get within their gnostic understanding of things, their slave the slave trade, this warfare was fine because they had the war gods. It was the Catholics who took the same paganism and made it more Christian. The early Christians were fundamentally different uh, from the Western Europeans. But, as a matter of fact, the early Christians weren't Western Europeans. They were Eastern. They were Asiatic. But, again, it depends on how you... It depends on who's telling you the history. And this is why you always have to question what you're being told. You have to do the research. Without doing the research, you're not going to understand things. And it's these, sometimes it's these tiny little pieces uh, that you didn't see that sort of makes the differences. Oh, okay, and now I understand or at least have an understanding or a better understanding of what's going on. Anyways, that's 22, 22 minutes in. Uh, I was able to stretch it. There is a lot there to continue on with, but uh, it's just simply not here right now. I was supposed to take the day off today and just simply, simply sleep all day. That's my eyes are already shut. Uh, so I'm going to go do the transitions section of the main vlog right now and uh, then go inside. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life.